Smiling Acres Music Festival is back for its third year in West Michigan. Many people work behind the scenes to make this festival a reality. None more so than Mark Lavengood. Not only does he perform at the festival every year, he also creates the lineup of musical guests, which continues to expand. I recently had a chance to sit down with Mark and learn more about the man behind the music. What's your drink of choice today? I am drinking some roast umber coffee. Yeah? Yeah, I take my coffee with a little bit of maple syrup, a little bit of cream if I got it. Local roaster? Yeah, they're out of Grand Rapids, man. Uh, you know, direct uh, trade with the um, farmers that they're working with in Guatemala and some other uh, um, spaces as well. Chad Morton, my buddy, he's a Grand Rapids cat. They're cool. also sponsors of the Smiling Acres Music Festival. You know, it's just the fam. The fam. The fam, baby. Well, let's jump right in. Smiling Acres is kind of, you know, one of the big things people are talking about right now. One of many music festivals happening uh, this time of year in Michigan. This has roots that involved you before it was open to the rest of the world, right? What's the history yeah. of, of Smiling Acres? Yeah, uh, so Smiling Acres was just like a gathering uh, of friends um, at the Family Drew's property where it's uh, located still in True Fit, Michigan. This is their home, now it is our home. They've welcomed us in. And they would just get together, uh, their friends and family, and have, you know, a fireworks celebration. Just a potluck. Just a hang, you know, in, in the back country. Yeah, make some noise, smelling niggers. And they would always talk about how they wanted to have a music festival like Wheatland, like Hoxieville, like Bliss Fest, you know, like all the greats. And um, so that's that's what it was for, yeah, a decade plus. And then um, I moved up here with the family uh, about four years ago and quickly became good friends with Nate and Rhonda and their their family, um, the proprietors of uh, uh, Smiling Acres. And um, so we just became friends, helping each other out. You know, they were going to shows and they knew me through the scene and um, we just were riffing. And, you know, they told me about what they were wanting to do and, and, you know, asked me to be a part of it. And I told them that that was something that I was very passionate about and like actively trying to, um, uh, you know, manifest in my life, you know, when the time was right, you know. I'd, being so busy, I just wasn't trying to take on, you know, uh, find, uh, like founding a festival back then, you know. Um, but when a team of people who have everything except you come and be like, I need you, I was like, yes, let's go. So that was when uh, we decided to do the first year. Uh, we're in our third year this year. Um, and uh, that, yeah, so that was 2021. You've had some incredible acts in year one. In year two, it seems like the, the the panel of performers keeps getting bigger and bigger. Who can we expect at the the big festival this year? Man, I am so proud of the lineup this year. Um, we've got May Early Wine, The Accidentals, Airborne or Aquatic, uh, Hen House Prowlers, Jonas Friddle, Earth Radio returning for year three. Um, we've got Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish. A lot of uh, West Michigan talent. Um, everyone that's playing the festival um, are, are friends of mine, um, you know, either collaborators or, um, you know, just um, people that I, I love so much, you know, for who they are and for the music that they make. Uh, we've got Blanco Suave from the Upper Peninsula. Um, uh, Eric Ingblade trio. Uh, the list goes on, you guys. It's pretty deep. Yeah, it's a it's a nice lineup this year for sure. How do you describe the the type? of music because it kind of has a broad range yeah no i i usually liken it to like what is your favorite independent community radio station right uh think of that like you know you're gonna get a little americana a little folk a little rock a little country some hip-hop you know like a, a an amalgamation of styles but um what you'll get over anything is quality music every single act for anyone who's never been to a music festival the the Sort of close-minded thought might be well you just go and you listen to music but there's actually there's more to it than that talk to me about some of the extracurriculars that people can expect uh this yeah. year out there on the farm yeah yeah there's uh we've got a lot of different activities um we've got a workshop space um we've got uh camping as well it's kid friendly um tons of vendors both craft and food um and uh the community really you know i mean like it's you know, you get folks of all walks of life coming in and just 
having a good time. You get there and it's like a lot of these other music festivals are just like your worries wash over you, you know, you're just you're just immediately at peace and, and like kids running and playing and jams at every campsite and just like you know, good vibes, you know, that's that's the the energy that we've cultivated and that we're supplying out there, you know, so it's, um, yeah, you know, it's a little bit of everything. Um, every music festival is unique in the space uh, where they exist and the people that come every year, which, is, you know, has a lot to do with where it's at and then how big the community is and how, you know, how how passionate, you know, where the affinity lies for every, you know, person who loves it so much, you know, are you going to fly in from LA? I don't know, you know, like <laughs> maybe next year, if this year you're too busy, but. One of the things I've enjoyed out there in recent years is some of the hiking on the grounds there is, is really nice. As well, yeah, I forgot that there's like hiking trails and yeah, um, yeah tons of state land, like uh, the 40 acres where it's on bumps up to like thousands of uh, acres of state land. You no, know, there's been uh, some ecstatic dance opportunities, yoga for people yeah. who need to get that stretch and, and right. get the movement in their life. So 100. something for everybody. Yep. Um, let's let's get through the, the important stats here, days and times, and where folks can find the ticket information. Yes, so it's gonna be Friday, June 30th through Sunday, July 2nd this year. Uh, every year it falls over the um, 4th of July weekend, uh, and when the 4th is during the week, uh, we usually do the uh, festival the week before. Right. Um, so Friday, June 30th through July 2nd, um, gates are open at 9.30, and I'm actually going to be welcoming everyone in as they as the gates are opened um, with the Smiling Acres Bluegrass Band. we got a stage, a mobile stage we're putting right by the entrance to the gate. So as yes. we open, boom, we're going to start rocking some Cherokee Shuffle, you know, right as you get in there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big to-do for sure excellent not everyone wants to get involved with a music festival in the capacity that you've gotten involved with this music festival but it's because you come from a world of music and i want to talk about that a little bit how far back does does music go for you because you weren't always a musician you were actually an athlete first right yeah yeah back uh back in the day in uh in high school i, I went to Comstock park just you know 10 miles north of grand rapids and um i was a scholar athlete you know captain of all the sports teams one of four valedictorian the least intellectually inclined you know <laughs> um but just like uh, for me it was like the you know like i was very socially um adept you know thanks to you know my family my upbringing and um and all the teams i was in and, and the role i always played was like Hey, let's, you know, we're one here. Let's all be good to each other, you know, try to lift each other up. Rising tide lifts all ships sort of vibe, you know. I could leave from the front or leave from the back. Um, but then my buddies were like, hey, I know you used to do band. And I was like, yeah, I did. And they like, you want to play drums for my band? I was like, uh, sure. You mean I get to come and hang out and you can let me play drums? Sure, you know. And So that got me into playing, you know, drums, and then I started playing guitar later, um, and you know, went to college, studied Spanish and business, and just like, I was just trying to search for, you know, what moved me, you know, and I uh, just ended up sticking with music, and you know, like it's yeah, it's brought me here today. It's yeah, it's incredible, man. This is a tune I wrote and named after my grandmamas. It's called Pour Bet et Lorraine. Can you still speak Spanish? Si, yo hablo español. 99% of the music I listen to is like from rock nacional, which is like uh, rock and roll from, you know, originating from Argentina, you know, largely from Buenos Aires, you know, artists like Andres Calamaro, Fito Paez, Charlie Garcia, Juan C, Ratones Paranoicos, now like Barbie Recanati, Martilina Bertoldi, um, just like inspiring artists with incredible music and like, I love it so much, but here I am in Michigan and like it's, you know, I, I I just don't have so many people to share it with, you know, like it, and that's okay with me, you know, but like I, yeah, I've been, yeah, communicate with folks and um, there are, you know, some folks around um, the circle here that uh, share, you know, my love for uh, Spanish and even if you don't share, like a lot of folks like the music still, even though they don't understand the lyrics, you know. Um, but I tell you what, when you get those lyrics and you're listening to a dope track and then they blast you and they make you think something like that maybe it was different than the way you thought it before, it's a good feeling. 
Oh yeah, one hundred percent. It's so interesting. I, I think about I the, the athleticism right. and then the, the degrees and and finding your way into the world of music. Um, eventually, you picked up an instrument that I wasn't even familiar with before we moved to Michigan, the dobro. Yes. Uh, when was that introduced to you, and how do you even describe that to people? Yeah, um, the dobro is a form of a slide guitar, right? Technically, it's a resonator guitar. Um, the resonator mechanism is the thing that looks like a hubcap, right? Uh, and it helps project and amplify the sound. I was introduced to it thanks to my buddies. Uh, you know, it really is like, you know, um, my buddies in, in high school, you know, um, the ones that asked me to play in their band. Uh, so my buddy, Ben, uh, from Winter Sessions, and my wrestling buddy, he had a resonator guitar, a Fender round neck resonator. So it's like a regular guitar you'd play, you know, ding, da, ding, da, ding, da, ding, like that. But uh, the square neck vibe, the strings are raised off of the neck like that far. So you can't push the strings down. You have to use a steel bar and it's like a, or a glass slide, you know, and you're like, so it's just a cool sound. It looks weird and it's just like, you know, it's intriguing, you know, to the eyes and the ears. I really I fell in love with it, the sound, you know, and, and so I, and I just stuck with it in the band that I was in. We were all playing acoustic guitars anyway, so, you know, we needed to diversify our instrumentation. Change it up. Yeah, and uh, so I ended up buying a, a Fender mandolin, $200 Fender mandolin, and traded my buddy Ben um, for his resonator guitar so that the band could have instead of four acoustic guitars, now we had a banjo, an acoustic guitar, a resonator guitar, and a mandolin. And now we're a folk band. <laughs> Do you still play with that group? Winter Sessions. Uh, I play, you know, Winter Sessions songs every single show I play, you know, usually at least like five. So it's a big part of my live performance. Music <laughs> is obviously fully intertwined in, in your household here. How, how many instruments do you think you can play at this point a little bit oh can i play how many can you dabble with oh i mean most of them you know like keys bass upright bass and electric guitars all kinds um you know drums aux percussion key, uh, keys i'm like basic i'm not like you know really you know like dutch snedeker level he's he's my key player he's a nasty boy um <laughs> but uh yeah i like to sing i write um yeah shucks just I yeah, just like to put myself in in the situation, you know. I learned one instrument, and then after that, I was like, "Oh, ukulele? I, I'm tinker with that." And like, "Oh, these strings kind of work just like those ones on the guitar." And so, like it, so like once you learn one, it's like when you w learn one language, it's a little easier to learn another. And you know, and then the more you learn, the more interconnected. And, uh, elements to the design of it you find, you know. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is it, does it help with writing and producing music to know how different instruments work and sound? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and especially even if you can't play them, uh, just to know like how they uh, fit in the uh, production of a song, you know, like mm. the, the role that the bass serves or the role that the... Um, you know, piano or organ or Rhodes have, right? Because those three are all keys, but they serve different purposes in the song, right? One might be a big drone, you know, on the, on the, on the, um, the organ, you know, and then that's just, you know, sort of the, you know, foundation, the piece of the, some arpeggio, you know, like, so, and yeah, it's the layers, the soundscape, and then you put them all together and it's the whole, it's the song, and you're like, just moves you you know yeah yes you're you're digging in a little bit more on the the production side of things talk to me about the the yeah. build out here on your property yeah so we're sitting right here in the expansion uh build out from the studio um up here in coral michigan we moved in four years ago and then about three years ago i started building out uh out building on the property welcome everybody come on into the bear den yeah so this is uh, the space here. We've got all the tools and toys uh, one could dream of, and they're all set up, record enabled, so we can just come in and get to work. 
finished that and was you know operating and functional you know out of the studio um but it got full real quick uh because i you know um have an appreciation for fine vintage instruments clearly uh and so i like to stack stack those up here as well um and uh and then i was like well you know could really use a live room in the studio. Yeah, this expansion project uh, was completed earlier, just like literally two months ago. So it's like so fresh, so new. I'm just trying to like uh, collaborate and trying to soak things up and to serve the projects I'm involved with already while also actively trying to, you know, um, you do some other cool things, you know, with a variety of people. Um, so, like, originally I thought, well, hey, I'll get a studio, and then I'll, I'll people can come and record here, and I'll record them, you know? And then I'm like, well, I want to record my stuff. So we could take one, burn it low, we could still come out of here, still come out of here. You know, and I got so much material that I've been putting on the back burner. Um, so then I'm like, well, you know, maybe we'll just, I'll, I'll be a producer and like everything we record in here, you know, I'll have, you know, a vested part in because I'm helping create and like bringing the, the people that I want to create with here and giving the opportunity to, you know, utilize the resources and, um, and that's great too, but I'm, I'm at a point now where there's just, you know, a lot of work and, and so I, you know, got to keep the priorities uh, strong while also, you know, serving everyone. And, and then, you know, once I get done with this workload, you know, in the next couple months, I'll probably, you know, just, I mean, continue creating, you know, continue creating. And, and that's the goal. Um, but we do have a barn on the property, which I want to, um, you know, restore and use for live uh, music shows, you know, and also having you know for live recording and you know, possible space for you know recording albums if you know any project uh is uh, open to that or into that sort of thing you know so it's yeah sky's the limit you know um but yeah really trying to just focus on the production of music and, and creation of music you know i spent a lot of time doing build out projects over the last year and a half and um it's just so much work you know and, and I'm really happy and proud of everything that we've achieved, but now it's like, all right, we've got this, you know, let's just keep on hammering out the hits, so. If you had unlimited funds for Smiling Acres, list three performers or bands you'd like to bring to the stage. They can be your favorites or just, you know, you can, fan, you can fanboy here. Wow, okay. I would say... I, mean, I know this probably changes on a daily basis. But, man. Uh, well, honestly, you know, um, shucks. I was, I wanted to say Theo Katzman. Yes. Or Wolfpack, you know, so like, uh, you know, like, but let's just say Theo. Um, and then I would say Town Mountain, okay. right? And they're out of Asheville, North Carolina, one of the leading prominent bluegrass uh, performing acts on the scene. Um, shout out to Tom Mountain, all the homies. Um, we'll, we'll get them out here soon enough. Um, and I'm going to do four. I know you asked for That's three. Fine. Another one would be Sierra Farrell. She's out of Nashville crushing it. Just, you know, um, a country songbird. You know, she's sharing stage with Willie Nelson and, you know, all the greats. She's crushing. Coming to Michigan, too, playing bells. Um, after Smiling Acres Music Festival. Uh, and then, of course, I would get hometown hero Billy Strings. We can bring is. him out. You know, Billy is just on top of the world right now. Um, you know, and uh, we love Billy. Everyone loves Billy. Um, I will give a shout out to the Wild Zen Yoga Fest also happening in um, at Smiling Acres uh, Grounds. Um, both Whitney Piles and Carrie LaBarge are gonna be um, offering workshops at Smiling Acres Music Festival, uh, but they're also gonna be- Our respective doing... significant others as indeed, it is. Indeed, indeed. Um, and uh, they're also gonna be at the Wild Zen Yoga Fest July 21st through 23rd out at Smiling Acres grounds. Um, so yeah, check that out too if you can. Yep, we'll do a whole other story on that. Yes, cool. sir. Good stuff, Mark. Jack, come on, boy, woo! Oh, I can't wait. For more on Mark Lavengood, visit his website, marklavengood.com. And for everything you need to know about Smiling Acres, head to smilingacresfestival.com.